still raining. This mythical King Arthur clearly hates me and everything I stand for. Uh, there's a beach down there. With sacrifices upon it. Uh, I'm just walking around stuff. It's, it's everywhere. See? Oh, it's a sea! Bloody hell, that wasn't there a minute ago. I'm on the beach at Tintagel. There's a waterfall there. It's not quite of Iceland standards. Let's see. There's a big rock thing. Uh, oh, it's quite high up there. Oh, I've got to, I've got to go back up there. Uh, history here. This is an old place, and uh, there's stuff, stuff, rocks and shit. And uh, it was built by uh, King Arthur, who was a spaceman, uh, with his mate Merlin, and uh, together they were very happy. Who needs specialist archaeologists? I just found a oh, it's a Bronze Age uh, uh, talk. It's it's clearly ancient and very valuable. Yeah. With I'm about to enter a very scary cave where uh, Arthur and Merlin used to sacrifice children and eat them. Some of them are still here. I, I think there's um, human remains in this. Uh, this is a very dark and scary place and just just beyond me there I can see it's that the that's the entrance to Avalon oh, that's, that's Cadbury world it's entirely made out of concrete and uh, there's a wave machine out there doing it all I'm not convinced I found the Gorgon Wraith of the game here are particularly recommended if you're elderly or infirm. It's on the flat throughout uh, entirely. Uh, very easy access, no energy expended. Uh, the chasm between here and the other part is uh, where Thor did an almighty fart in 1276 and blew a hole through the, uh, through the natural rock formation. It's all true. Now the, the fart went in this direction. And ended some somewhere about there, and that there is there is still a, a massive hole in the ocean floor at that point, which they actually call Thor's fart room. What is little known about this place is that in the 14th century it was a very well-known cruising uh, cottage for promiscuous gay men, and uh, as proof of this, we are coming up to uh, what was believed to have been a glory hole. I don't know what that is, you better Google it. They claim that to my left, that's to your right of course, there was an entrance into the courtyard, so one of the main ways into the castle. Uh, I happen to know differently, this was simply a, a promontory, a pillar from which Brian May would play guitar solos. There we are, ostensibly the mainland upper ward. Now I know this happens to be ward because this was used in the 1960s as a hospital. This was one of the main wards here. There was no roof upon it because Florence Nightingale said in 1958 that uh, she thought that all hospital wards at Tintagel Castle should be open air to help the, uh, the patients get exposure. Uh, to the rain, because the rain in Cornwall was thought to be very good for causing pneumonia and early death, uh, which obviously kept, kept the wards pretty clear. Uh, I've just trod on a child. Oh dear, it's, it's gone. Sorry. I've it's spoken there. to the child's parents and they said it's okay because they were quite small and they're not going to miss them very much, so the police aren't uh, making any charges against me. So here is the mainland upper ward. You can see the, the turf, that's where the beds were. Uh, down the end, there's some people down there. They're uh, they're having a shit um, in the open air in front of everyone. It's terrible behaviour, but you know, they're tourists, what can you do? And over here is where they uh, used to throw kittens uh, as, as a, ooh, so it's another child just fallen off. Used to throw kittens as a sacrifice to uh, Diana Ross, who you probably know was uh, revered in medieval times as, uh, as a shrieking goddess. 
cliff. The thing is, you climb up all these steps thinking you're going to get to another part, and you actually, you actually end up just back on the beach that's down there, which is, which is kind of odd. Uh, as you see, as we mentioned about the child sacrifice that took place there, you see there's hundreds of school children being taken to the other side to be thrown off into the sea to appease the rain gods. These are known as the famous cannibal rocks of Tintagel. Uh, they've been put behind uh, wire fencing so they don't attack people. I've now crossed onto the island to watch the child sacrifice and I'm walking up an entirely natural staircase. It's made of uh, lava deposits that uh, lay themselves in, in perfect step formation, which is, is quite useful for me. Okay, so I'm now on the main part of the island. There's children all around me. I think they'll be given a last look around the place before they're thrown off the cliff. I've tried consoling the children by telling them that death is fairly rapid and not that painful. Uh, this thing behind me, they say, was built about 1900. I happen to know that it was actually built by dinosaurs. Now, one of the things about Tintagel is that they keep saying, please don't light any fires, very difficult to put them out. But I have just read a sign saying that fires here that they couldn't control uh, washed away topsoil and not pushed it away because that would be a wet fire which is weird and exposed lots of buildings they didn't know were there before so my suggestion is if you do come to Tintagel uh, wait for a very dry day and start a fire and uh, help the archaeologists yeah the, uh, the archaeologists would like me to remind you that starting fires is a bloody silly thing to do yeah and so 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 don't do it I've just discovered this previously unknown room. It's the, the storms of the last half hour have blown it away. And uh, I don't want to get too excited. It's early days, but I think we could have actually found uh, Camelot. It's here. But they were bloody small in those days. Don't judge me. I'm now standing in King Arthur's games room. Uh, he didn't have much. It was just uh, a wee sport and uh, a pinball machine. Uh, it pleased him. Merlin, Merlin hated it. <clears throat> Merlin wasn't up for games very much. Merlin uh, liked reading and knitting and uh, making cakes. He did, did a lot of that. I'm too. very fortunate. It was lost for years, but I found number eight. Amazing. Eight's. Uh, well, you know what eight was. I'm now walking around King Arthur's garages. Uh, he had a lot of cars. He was very fond of uh, expensive cars, Daimlers, uh, BMWs. He had a couple of Rolls Royces. Uh, had, had a Lamborghini at one point as well, but that was taken away uh, when his, um, his fourth single, I'm the King, uh, didn't chart as highly as he thought and some of his grounds were repossessed. But um, these are just to say some of his garages, what's, what's left of them. The problem was, of course, they were never used because you couldn't get a car over from the mainland because you had to go over the bridge. Uh, so all the cars are currently, apart from the Lamborghini, which was repossessed, are at the bottom of the sea. Oh, say la vie. It's getting very windy now. This is due to the nuclear explosion that took place in Bodmin about five minutes ago. Okay, this is terrifying. I'm now entering a very long, dark tunnel where uh, spacemen live. Uh, I don't mean astronauts, that would be, that would be silly, because, of course, as we all know, astronauts live on Mars. Um, but, you know, aliens, basically. Uh, have you, you seen Prometheus? Yeah, well, it's, it's that, it's that alien. Oh, hi! Hi, you having, having a biscuit? He's having a biscuit at the moment, he doesn't want to, doesn't want to kill me. Uh, so, yeah, cheers, cheers, mate. Yeah, nice, uh, nice head shake thing, great. Very excited and all this, extremely strong wind. Um, I've actually come out to the Donguer Cliffs. Uh, the Donguer Cliffs are, well, there's a sign here saying the Donguer Cliffs. Uh, it's basically where, where the Olympics start from. There we are. You see the, you see the sign there to, to prove it. Uh, Donguer, Don, obviously French for, for in, and Guerre is uh, it's an abbreviation of Guerre, uh, which is the French for war. So this is the cliffs they used in time of war, as opposed to the weapon of mass destruction cliff they used, which is Cliff Richard. I think I've reached the nerve centre of the court of King Arthur. Uh, this basically was used uh, as a control room. Uh, here Arthur would have his CCTV monitors. There were security guards 
uh, they, they all had tattoos and stuff. They were, they're quite big, but you know, there's nothing, nothing between the ears. And uh, they used to sit here and they'd watch the security cameras and they'd make sure that nobody came or went. Um, and after they'd done that, they would go home and then they'd sleep. And it all happened here, right there, on that. If you if you touch the stone that's here, touch it like like that, then you still get a sense of the times of King Arthur. I I touch that stone and it makes me uh, dress up as a, a knight and, and ride a horse and slay dragons um, and go abroad and pillage and, and kill people in the name of Jesus. Another exciting discovery, it's King Arthur Central International Airport. Uh, it's just through here. It's only been uncovered in the last few years. It says the garden. That's that's bollocks. You don't know, listen to that stuff. Here it is. Uh, this this was the, the the terminal right here. The airstrip. You can, you can still see the remains of the airstrip running along there. The, the, so the planes were quite small in those days. They only had to take one person because King Arthur was the only person who was allowed to fly anywhere. Um, on this spot, basically, there was lots of shit happened. Loads of stuff. Uh, it's just way too much to tell you about in one uh, serious video documentary. So just read about it somewhere. So basically, all of Tintagel is made of cardboard. Uh, it's, it's double corrugated cardboard, so it has stood the test of time pretty well. But if you look at over here, it's just all of it. It's, it's just two-dimensional card, cardboard rubbish. You can buy it in a flat pack. Uh, I think they're sold on Amazon for uh, it's about 19.99 because it's, it's quite a large set but the postage is free on this one if, if you look for uh, build my own Tintagel Castle cardboard version because they do have another version in paper but that's that's just a waste of your money then you might want to uh, buy one of those you do need a site of about 50 acres to build it so you kind of need to live uh, in a very middle class environment to be able to uh, to erect one <laughs> weren't erect in a video. It's so rude. I'm now about uh, 100 meters beneath sea level. The, the sea is all around me on either side. It's only being held up by a very thin veneer of uh, perspex. But that's all right. It's not dangerous. I'm going to go and see a bit of wall. This is a very important bit of wall because it's upright. Shitting crikey. I found the wall. It's... Oh, God. It, uh, it, it's a wall. That was worth a 10 minute walk down here. Hello, I'm the wall. I'm very important. Now go away. The wall started coming after me, so I had to, had to run away. It was getting really violent. She was naked from the waist down. I think it's the Germanic way. Uh, so, yeah, there's uh, just uh, stuff here. There's loads of you know, old crappy buildings. That nothing left of them. Uh, there we are. So now you know. Thank you very much for watching my documentary about the history of Tintagel Castle. I hope you have learned many things and that in the future when you come here you will know that it is a place and stuff. Bye bye.